In this session, we'll discuss supervisory control systems and why state machines are often used to design them. Supervisory control systems anticipate and manage abrupt changes to a control loop. Since state machines deal with discrete transitions between modes of operation, they're ideally suited for tackling such a problem. Let's take a closer look at how they can be applied. This schematic here describes the behavior of a classic feedback control loop. We have a system that we'd like to control, which I'll refer to as the plant. If you prefer not to think in the abstract, you can consider the plant an automobile. Now, what we want to do is match certain attributes or states of the plant to a desired or reference behavior. To achieve this, the controller supplies input to the plant in an attempt to drive the error to zero. Control schemes like this work wonders when the rules of the game are fixed and unchanging, but we can easily envision a more complex system in which the component of this diagram changes so quickly and so drastically that our fine-tuned controller simply can't handle it. When such discontinuities demand that the control law fundamentally changes, an extra supervisory layer of logic is required to manage the switching. So how would we conceptualize, test, and implement a supervisory control for a cruise controller? What we'll do is create a state transition diagram that consists of two states, engaged and disengaged. Each state represents when different control laws are in use. The disengaged state is exited when the driver pushes set or resume on the dashboard. Similarly, there are two exit pathways from engaged, when the driver pushes cancel or taps on the brakes. Now, if we wanted to design with multiple control laws, we could include extra states and transitions, but we'll keep it simple for now. So you can imagine the supervisory logic as a layer that operates at a higher level than the continuous control laws. This diagram captures the overall structure, but how can we directly tie the state machine back to the control loop we started with? Of course, if it's just a conceptual diagram, we don't really need to worry with this. But if it is important, we can make the connection by specifying what the controller is supposed to do inside the modes engaged and disengaged. And while we don't see the full details of the function C control, we presumably know what this means and where to go to review the source code. So we looked at a cruise controller as an example, but supervisory logic can be applied to a whole range of systems, anything from microwaves to space stations. State transition diagrams are useful not only for understanding these systems, but they also aid in testing and verification when created in the proper software package. And if you'd like to directly tie the diagrams to the lower level controllers or plant models, you can do that too. At the end of the day, all of this stuff has to be integrated together one way or another. Since the state machine is oftentimes the top level of a design, it makes sense for it to be the glue that binds everything together.